Hello, and today I want to talk about a brand new Synology rack mount, but it's a rack mount with a slight difference. This is a new entry in the Flash Station series where some information has floated our way. This is the Flash Station FS2500. Now, this is um, a 1U 12 bay SSD rack mount. It takes advantage of 2.5 inch SATA SSDs, and it's, I think, developing a brand new chassis that's being utilized hopefully it's there on screen for you and again when i talk about two and a half inch sata ssds there let's get it straight out of the way you can only utilize this device with synology's own ssds the sat 5200 or indeed the sat 5210 which again is a model idea i've been seeing online i'm going to do a little bit more digging on that one but this is their series of SSDs in their brand new Flash Station solution. This isn't the first one that Synology have released. The Flash Station series have been around for a few years now and they've developed them in a number of ways. There was desktop solutions and heavy duty rack mount solutions and that FS6400, an absolute beast of a system there. Um, lots to go on. But this um, rack mount solution here, it doesn't. I'm not gonna say it has bad specs, that it doesn't have bad specs, it has very good specs, but Compared with the frighteningly high-end Xeons, this system is actually comparatively modest to them. And I'm going to be very interested when this actually finally does filter down to a full release and launch, what the price tag is going to be. Because it's actually, you know, the CPU for a start, let's talk about that, the Ryzen CPU inside. Now, this isn't the first NAS that's had a Ryzen-based CPU from Synology. We've kind of got used to it now. It still feels a bit new. That a year and a half ago, Synology kind of revealed they were going to be utilizing Ryzen CPUs, namely in the pre previous units, the V1500B, a quad-core 2.2 gigahertz CPU. Now, that same embedded Ryzen family of processors is what's been used in this one. So it's a flash station NAS, which typically has always been dripping in enterprise and dripping in enterprise Xeon processors. And now this one is flicking to a Ryzen embedded. This features the V1780B. Now again, as mentioned, released roughly the same time as the other Ryzen that we talked about there. This is a quad core Ryzen as well but with a significantly higher clock speed at 3.35 gigahertz, which can be burst up to 3.6, a small jump there, but a, an important one there because the other CPU we just talked about doesn't have any kind of kind of burst or turbo readily available. This new CPU has got um, uh, um, probably a higher power consumption overall, but other than that, it's a very similar CPU in a number of ways in terms of its PCI lanes, in terms of its max memory, in terms of its architecture for PCIe slots, its non-GPU, uh, non-graphic embedded. So what I'm interested here is, is this CPU going to be the proto that's gonna be used in the next tier of SMB solutions? somewhere down the line we're talking about follow-ups you know a year year and a half from now to the likes of the 1621 1821 etc etc so i am going to keep a very uh, close eye on this processor there but as it's a flash station you're going to need a lot of memory this system arrives with 8 gig of ddr4 ecc memory synology branded memory of course that can be upgraded up to 32 gig i believe across two slots but that is to be concerned uh, com confirmed but one thing that is missing on here, which I've mentioned in previous videos with other devices, but it's kind of an area of contention here, is it lacks M2 SSD slots internally. Now, what some of you might argue, well, who cares? It's got 12 SATA SSD bays. Go home. I, I still don't get why Synology in some of these solutions still doesn't enable NVMe SSD caching bays i don't i know this system when we talk about some of the other hardware involved uh, particularly ports and connections shortly i just feel like this is a system that could still benefit from nvme ssd slots even if the overarching storage media on it is 2.5 inch ssd anyway that nvme caching in its higher end performance still has a place there even in a flash system like this where some of that metadata and that smaller file data could so easily live on the cache in copied form. Um, 
Even though it doesn't have those slots, of course, it has a PCIe upgrade, a PCIe Gen 3 times 8 just like pretty much everything SMB to Enterprise from Synology, which means adding 10 GBE cards, adding fiber channel cards, adding SSD cache cards, adding combo cards as well. Lots of upgradability there from Synology's own range of expansion cards. But I'm pleased to say this system already arrives with two 10 GBE, two copper 10 gigabit ethernet ports there on the rear, 10G base T. So again, you've already got 2000 meg uh, megabytes per second throughput potential anyway on this system, along with a couple of 1GBE ports there. They haven't attached that one G, uh, that LAN management port that we saw on the DS362XS uh, Plus, but still nonetheless, that's a good degree of external bandwidth there. And again, this is a SATA SSD platform. That's it will still comfortably max out those two port, uh, those two 10 GBE ports, I believe, and fully saturate those. So again, having that upgrade slot there on the rear is going to allow you to kind of add further slots there as needed. So it's going to be very interesting to see what this system can do when more information becomes available when you fully populate it maybe with like four 10G ports there or even slam one of those fiber channel cards inside there. Um, again, in terms of internal uh, um, architecture of this system, unsurprisingly, it's gonna run DSM-7. You're not gonna have your SHR. SHR does not live on the Flash Station series for many, many reasons, because unlike um, arguments for and against it in terms of uh, performance on some of the XS series that we talked about before, on this system, it wouldn't make any sense because SSDs in a flash system, you have gotta take wear into consideration, Endur endurance and durability. Mixing drives would be incredibly ill-advised on a system like this. Now, Synology seem to be aware of that, of course, very early doors, uh, the inclusion of RAID F1, which is a kind of staggered write system, which allows you to sort of comfortably choose or predict the drives that's going to wear out the fastest and therefore be able to time the replacement of these drives quite in a staggered fashion which is really really good and again we haven't done a video on this channel um showing raid one in all uh, raid f1 in all its entirety because it's very hard to demonstrate um but take my word for it when it comes to a flash system a staggered wear pattern when you've got two drives with one doubling up what's going on makes a lot of sense we have talked about raid one in other videos but it's incredibly hard to demonstrate in a realistic fashion um Again, the full range of supported services in DSM on this system. So again, all your office applications, all of your sharing uh, and file management applications, your backup applications, there's gonna be a lot more support or uh, virtualization on a system like this. And of course, you're gonna have the likes of Active Backup Suite working with a lot of the cloud services. And again, this is a system that is tailor-made for remote fast access as well. It's not just localized. So, um, this working alongside a lot of those C2 cloud services are going to be real, real interesting. I'm always surprised that Synology hasn't really integrated those platforms more um, given their enterprise feel and them trying to create uh, and provide not just uh, a product, but a solution and dare I say an entire ecosystem with a lot of their solutions there. Um, Inside this system as well, you've got two PSUs as you would expect from a rack mount, but I know a number of you when you look at one U rack mount are always slightly worried that a brand won't give you a two PSU option. This does, so you've got that included. There's some USB ports, which we're not really gonna lose any sleep over. Use them for UPSs. Again, they're USB 3.2, Gen 1, five gig, who cares? Um, but the rest of this system is still very, very impressive. I really like the full ventilation. I imagine this is a noisy NAS, when it's in utilization. But for a 1U rack mount, again, the big, big area of focus for me is going to be that price tag because a lot of the other flash station series have got such aggressive internal architecture that it tends to push their average price point worldwide astronomically high. It's still cheaper than a lot of the data center top tier stuff, but still very, very expensive compared to the rest of the portfolio. And it leaves a big gap between a lot of the solutions. Whereas uh, the architecture of this NAS seems to rein it in a little bit, a little bit like the Tembe um, desktop solution, the FS1018, um, that didn't get anywhere near the coverage I think it should have. This is gonna be one of those solutions I think that could really do a good job of filling in the gaps of their portfolio. But again, it's very early doors. This is just a preview on this particular solution and hopefully we'll find out more as this 
kind of comes to market. Again, we don't know much on availability or price. We've seen it prop up on a few websites so far, but with such distinct price tags on there, it makes it very hard to actually go ahead and go, yep, that's correct. So we're not going to put them here because I don't believe that any of that could be completely certified at this time. Same goes for release dates as well. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll keep you updated on this. Do remember, next week, there's going to be the Synology Live event um, on the 2nd of December. They're going to talk a lot about what they've done and where they're going as a brand uh, for 2022 and indeed the start of 2023. Stay tuned for that. And again, second Thursday, the 2nd of December. Stay tuned for that. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Click like if you've enjoyed the video. Subscribe to learn more about Synology solutions as they arrive and of course use the free advice section over on Compares if you need help choosing the right solution for you thank you so much for watching and i will see you next time